Hey everybody, welcome to the Sunday Vlog. I'm Steph. So, how do you choose a programming language? There are four things that I look at when I make a choice for a programming language. So let's start with them very quickly because I know some of you want to go and do something, whatever it is. Okay, number one, consider the job you need to do. What I mean by job, I mean the type of coding that you want to do or the kind of programming that you want to do. So let me elaborate on this. So when I say consider the job, I mean consider the project. Do you need to build an iOS app? Do you need to build an Android app? Your choices are pretty clear there. Do you need to do web? Do you need to do web for small business, big business? Do you want to do IoT? You know, these different jobs or just different types of program will obviously play a role in terms of what language you choose. You're not going to be writing IoT or machine learning code with PHP, for example, or Ruby. You're going to be doing that probably with Python, maybe C++. Uh, there's other languages as well, but you get the idea. If you're looking at it from the point of view as an entrepreneur, maybe somebody wants to build your own product in software, the language you choose, first thing you got to say, what's the best language for the job? You know, when it comes to mobile application development, it depends on the other circumstances as well, because not only do you have iOS with Swift or Objective-C, or Android development with Kotlin or Java, you have also hybrid solutions, things like Flutter and PhoneGap, etc. All right, so um, the second part of number one is the kind to consider the kind of programming that you want to do. Not all programming is the same. If you're writing uh, uh, controllers for small IoT devices with C, that's a totally different type of programming than building web apps with PHP or Python or PHP or whatever, C Sharp or Java, whatever. It's a different game. Some people prefer one type of program or the other. Some people prefer a mix. It's a personal choice, really. So those are the first two considerations in terms of the type or the kind of work that you want to do or you need to do. Number two, consider the ecosystem around the language. Is it mature? Is it big? So the big mistake that... I've made in the past was to jump into technology that was not yet well enough established and I found it fading. I did it in software, I did it in other areas as well. So for example, in the Java world, we had a whole bunch of different frameworks out there. This is back, we're going back to the 90s. And there were some frameworks that I really, really liked, but, and I sort of jumped into them, even though they had a very small market share, and don't get me wrong, they had a lot of buzz. People who were in that, those technologies were like, oh, this is a great, it's going to be great. And I've actually developed some stuff where I use some fringe Java framework, and it basically just fizzled and died into nothing. So what happened is you had a code base, which is abandoned by that uh, community. The community no longer existed, which is a bad place to be. Because as things develop, as technology evolves, you want the framework or the language that your your app is developed in. You want it to be able to, uh, you want it to progress with the change of the times. And so, I always look at now what I think the ongoing ecosystem is going to be for a particular framework, a particular language, etc. Uh, as a general rule of thumb, if a technology is uh, open and cross-platform, it has a far, it's far more likely that it will exist in five, 10 years than a, pro, than a technology stack that is closed. There are some exceptions, like for instance, uh, Microsoft Tech. Although with, uh, with the new Mono project, well, it's not so new, but the Mono project opens up .NET to a broader audience, although nobody, I don't know how many people actually use it in a broader audience. And Microsoft is so big that uh, even though it is proprietary, it still is so big that it's safe. But if you look at Flash, Flash was, again, a closed technology. It was cross-platform, but it had all kinds of problems and eventually got killed. I can go with a bunch of other technologies. For example, I remember back in the 90s, there was this uh, Visual Delphi. Uh, it was a competitor to Visual Basic, and Visual Basic was the king of uh, application development in the early, early 90s, that's for sure. Everybody was on Windows, right? Windows was so dominant, so if you're writing apps, 
It was uh, it was all done in Visual Basic for the most part. Although you could do with Delphi. And I remember a good friend of mine at the time, he was a huge fan of Delphi, and he felt that Delphi was far superior to VB, and he didn't understand why people went with uh, VB when Delphi was so much, Delphi was so much better. Uh, but Delphi, again, VB was good enough, more than good enough, so dominant. And even though he thought that Delphi was better, and I don't know if it was, I don't remember. And so I remember vaguely in some ways it was superior, but I, it's been such a long time. But it's gone nowhere. It's, you know, I, I'm sure there's still Delphi apps out there. Some people are still using that language, but it's such a niche thing now that it's like, uh, you know, you don't want to be there. At the same time, so is VB. VB is now gone too. But nonetheless, that's just one example of where, even though some people would argue that Delphi was at least as good, if not better, than the mainstream, it didn't have enough of a of an ecosystem and didn't have enough of a market penetration that it did pretty much die out. Although there's still some Delphi out there a little bit, but I wouldn't jump into it if you want to maximize opportunities. Now, as a business owner, I would never want to find myself with a technology stack based on some niche language and frameworks. Again, for the same reason, because then all of a sudden, finding programmers who are going to want to program in some obscure language or work with some obscure framework is going to be difficult because programmers, you know, they're typically practical sort of people and they want to be sure that they have skills that they're developing that are relevant in terms of job opportunities and so forth. So as both as a business owner and as a developer, you want to be very careful about what technologies to consider in terms of ecosystem, in terms of market share, because you don't want to find yourself, you know, in the middle of nowhere, if you will. Number three, you want to consider the job opportunities around the language. Again, these are related. We'll go back to the Delphi example. You may learn Delphi as an example, and you may find it to be the best language since sliced bread. But if nobody is using it and there's not too many job opportunities, it's kind of like, mm, you know. That being said, a blanket statement I always make is that if you learn one modern programming language, whether you learn whether you learn JavaScript or Java, C Sharp or PHP or Python or Ruby, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You've learned them all pretty much, you know, in the sense that all these modern languages, they share like maybe 80 to 95%, depending on the language, of the same principles, concepts, and constructs. The syntax is different. The code that you actually write is different. But at the end of the day, it's not the syntax, not the code that makes the programming language. It's the... Uh, underlying the underlying architectures ecosystem etc 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 so let's say you decide you learn javascript and you find in your area all the jobs are in c sharp for you to learn c sharp from javascript will be pretty simple i wouldn't be too concerned about it and the fourth and final consideration again it's related to the first couple second couple points uh number four consider market forces competition etc right you don't want to uh, look at a technology just from a tech point of view. You want, you want to look at the business implications of a technology choice. So, for example, with Studio Web 4, which was a rewrite from scratch, this is my learning SaaS, we, um, I had the choice of any technology I wanted to. I could have done with C Sharp.net, I could have done Java Spring, I could have done Python Django or Flash. Well, it would have to have been Django. I could have done Node. Node was very, very close to pulling the trigger on Node. Uh, but at the time, when I, we started rewrite over a year, a year and a half ago, I felt that the Node packages and uh, I felt that the, uh, the ecosystem around Node was still in flux, a little bit too much for my taste. I'm sure it's much more solid today. It might be perfectly solid today. I haven't looked at it in a while. But I went with something more mature. I went PHP Laravel simply because it's very mature, very stable, very capable, and suits all of of our needs and it's the most it's the most predominant of the PHP frameworks and so to find node people who is uh, not node people to find Laravel people would be easier than other PHP frameworks uh, to find node people is also very 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 easy as well that's why it was so when I was making that choice node and PHP was neck and neck was neck and neck uh, ultimately the fact that the previous version of Studio Web was written in PHP was, to give you an 
an idea how the old PHP, how old it was, seven, eight years ago, it was created with CodeIgniter, which is still around, but it's kind of a framework that people don't really use these days too much. Um, now you're going to get CodeIgniter people going to be complaining to me, guaranteed. So anyway, so it was we could actually take some of the old libraries uh, from the old Studio Web and repurpose them in the new. So that was a big part of the reason why I, well, one of the reasons anyway, why I decided to use uh, PHP Laravel. Also PHP 7, very stable. The PHP community is huge, huge, huge. And uh, they're working hard like an underdog. They're working hard to make the uh, PHP ecosystem uh, that much more speedy, stable, and complete. So I have a lot of confidence in uh, that whole community going forward. That's probably the, another big reason. Well, that's one of the other big reasons why I went with PHP. Anyway, this video is not about to say use PHP. Use whatever language suits the criteria that I laid out for you. Job opportunities, the type of work you want to do, the type of project that you're building, the ecosystem, uh, the environment around the language, well, that's the ecosystem, and the market forces as well, the market forces as well. Uh, and favor open platforms over closed platforms. Open typically wins out in the end. All right, I hope this is helpful. Bye-bye.